This is Levi 2 King. Oh, man. Hold on. Wait a minute. I got extra stuff going on here. What's happening? We got a house full, y'all, so y'all forgive me if uh, I'm a little discombobulated. That ain't why I'm discombobulated, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, uh, welcome to Wake Up St. Louis, Me Too Music, Sunday morning show. What up, though? I'm Levi 2 King. It's Don Rice. Rob Woody. Yeah. Andra. Sean Tate. Get on that mic, sister C, baby. Uh, make sure she's on, too, Rob. I don't think she's on. Yeah, she blew in. <laughs> there she's on. There she go. That was hilarious. <laughs> she blew on the mic, y'all. Come on, Miles. You say something while your granny tries to get Miles this together. Miles Frierson. Miles Frierson. Come on. We getting it together, y'all. We getting it together. We still waiting on Alvin Quinn. There we go. But you got to talk in the mic, Sister C. Ba- Sister C. Ba- well, y'all going to hear me say Sister C, baby. That's Sister oh, Cynthia God. Hilliard. <laughs> but I always call her Sister C, baby. I want to say good morning. Victor Jordan, we see, is on the line. Is on the line. Here we go with this old talk. On the line. Representing Grady Grace Church, yeah. Bishop Larry Owen, First Lady oh, Nina Jones. Uh, we also have, who else is talking to us over there? Uh, on the YouTube side, we have Lady Lillian Blair. Good morning to you. Lori Union. Good morning, team. Pastor Tina Grimes representing uh, her husband, Pastor Mark Grimes, Faith Works Fellowship Ministries. And she says she can't hear on YouTube. She can't hear on YouTube. Let me double check. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. I know what I did. YouTube. YouTube. Somebody's texting me. I think they might be texting me to tell me they can't hear. Hold on, let me see. No sound on YouTube. Morning, okay. but can't hear you. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let's see what's going on here for a minute. Let's work this out. Testing. Testing. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here, y'all? Why we got all this dead space? Come, come somebody talk to us. Jose- Josephus says, free Bill Cosby. Oh, wow. I don't even want to touch that out. Oh, no. Y'all going to talk. You mean Bill Cosby? Oh. That's what everybody That's, <laughs> that's, what everybody that, that's, that's pretty accurate yeah. right there. <laughs> Bill Cosby. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, man. Yes, sir. Okay, so let me type something to them. I'm going to reset. The Ghetto practice. Radio. You are listening yeah. to Ghetto Radio. Uh, say, <laughs> a minute. On Sunday. Right. As he types <laughs> and talks. On Sunday. It's the Me Too Music Ghetto Radio Show. I'm getting a lot of text. Anybody on, uh, or one of y'all on the YouTube chat? Can y'all start chatting? Let them, I just let them know. But, uh, let me see what's going on here for a minute. What could be happening here? Let's see. What could be happening? What could be happening? <laughs> Audio stream. Audio stream. Let's see what we got. Hey, Don. Yeah. What's up? I don't know. Did you see Golden State whoop? Uh, Man, that, that was, was a last I fell asleep on it. Wow. <laughs> Man, beat down. It was a beat. It was like, man, y'all not even on our level. I was like, man, Steph could rest the rest of the he, he might not even need to come back this series. Oh well, he need to get his legs on them. Yeah, so. man, but. You can get him up in practice. 
<laughs> I don't know, man. Houston gonna be Houston gonna be a challenge, man. So. Houston gonna have their hands full with the Jazz, bro. Yeah, they gonna play some defense. How bad? How bad did Canelo look, man? Playoffs, man. <laughs> how bad did their team look? Man? Mm-hmm. They suck. <laughs> I but yeah, I'm looking forward to um, hopefully Cleveland going down. Oh yeah, I doubt that's it. That's what they're, it looks like it's gonna happen. They're at home. Man. I doubt it. But they're at home. I mean, dude. that would just be the refs awesome. Gonna, the refs gonna give them the calls and stuff. Indiana you know? been giving it to them. Yeah. So everybody on Facebook side, please be patient with us for one second. Came in one and second. we got everything up and live and running, but not getting signals on the YouTube side. So. We're resetting the system, so y'all please be patient. We got a house full. Yes, it's just the devil. Yes, just trying to just. The devil. Yeah, he don't want this message devil. to get out. She said, "How about my devil?" He don't. And I, I'm not quick to blame stuff on the devil, but mm, today we're gonna. This do it. We're gonna do it today. Today, today it's all up these last the two days. The devil, it's been all up in the technology. Man, <laughs> it on janky radio. Uh, this, this ain't. This ain't got to do with us. <laughs> I'm telling you, I get in here. Every, I was here at six something this morning. I make sure yeah, everything's up and running. Working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do what we do every week. We never had this issue, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we want to expose. Mm. We, now, right before Ooh. we were just talking and. Um, uh, I was telling Rob about a commercial we're going to play about a, a, a friend, pastor friend of mine in Houston. Okay. Tonight they're premiering. He's having his this exclusive interview with a former manager of Planned Parenthood, where she's doing te- she's doing a tell all. She's okay. telling all. So wow. okay, I heard sound that time. So she's telling all, and with that, uh, she makes a statement. He plays a bite, a drop from it, where she says, "This may get me killed," mm-hmm. and he says, "Oh no, uh-uh. we come against that in the name of Jesus." Mm-hmm. But I was saying, hey, the way. But I was saying. So see, baby, your mic is not on. Say something. It's on. No, I think she turned it back off. She turned it on when she uh, put it back in the. (laughs) She turned it off when she put it back in there. Yeah. Put that in there. In there. Mike all along. Very nice, huh? There you go. Mike all along. Keep my hands up. All right, so yeah, those of you all on the Facebook side, we're almost there. All right, I got, let me see. Do I still see audio? Do I see? I still don't see audio over there, y'all. What's going on with this thing? Uh, wait a minute. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. What did I do? Testing. Testing. Let me see. Give me a second. Let me play some music. Give me one second, y'all. Boy, this is Ghetto Radio this morning, huh? Janky Promotions. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about excellence at Me Too Music, just, oh, just so you know. Oh, all all about excellence. <laughs> That's right, boy. Could have asked somebody. <laughs> Erna French said, uh, <laughs> who's doing sign language? <laughs> who's doing sign language today? Because I can't hear y'all. <laughs> Shots fired after we just did, you, did the recording. Type, type to them one more time, y'all. Tell them we have a couple of audio time. difficulties. Hey, look. <laughs> Erna, Erna got what she wanted yesterday. Now she, she oh, now she got me. She's back on her Tony. Now she uh, sipping yeah. on that haterade. <laughs> you don't Test know them. how easy we can lose those files. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Wow, y'all! I'm not getting anything here. Wow. So wow. everybody, so join us on the solution. Facebook side. Y'all need to come to the Facebook side. Type over there and tell them to come to Facebook. Tell them we don't get the stream video today. Wow, uh-huh. they can see us. Yeah, they can Don't watch, see us. but tell them to turn on the audio to, to you to uh, uh, Facebook. So they can hear us. Wow. wow. This is ridiculous. Somebody spell us. This is crazy. When you get one new technology. What up, Bobby C? Bobby C. The old one. <laughs> you say, what's it, C, baby? Don't forget the old one. You Charles Ransom. What up, right? Charles? <laughs> All right, we're going to go Prefer, dive what's into up, this. Man? So we're going to go and just stay here. Everybody join us on Facebook. That's how we used to stream. We only used to stream on Facebook. So tell them on the YouTube side, somebody, to join us on Facebook. Mary Hicks, what's up, man? Let me look one more time just to see what I'm missing here. Webcam, webcam, audio stream. Bobby wow. C. I don't see any audio showing up here. So This is like yesterday. Bobby C. Bobby C. Bobby C. <laughs> Bobby C. <laughs> Bobby, you played that organ. Yes, you did, bro. Yesterday, played it with some annoying. First man. take. Oh wow! Uh oh! What did you just do, man? Uh oh! Uh oh! There we go. Promotion. Okay. Man, dude, I got static. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, what's going on? <laughs> what are we doing? Okay, 
Give me a minute. What are we doing? Nice. We're going to get to this show. What's up, Corey? Hey, it's Teandra. Yeah, that's it what it be. is. It's Teandra. It may be. When she left yesterday, everything started working. Yeah, mm. it's Teandra. Oh, don't. Because I'm trying to say at a level of Christianity. Testing, one, two. See? Try to stay there. What see? up, Corey Fuller? <laughs> see? Oh, I see what's going on. It says Windows installed some new updates over here. Oh, so no, it, it shut something. It knocked something Windows. out on this computer. Oh, and I usually turn all my updates that's off. That's what it is. Windows. Yeah, it just popped up. Windows installed new updates. <laughs> oh. Audio drive. Oh. I, I knew it. I knew yes. it. All right. It so we're on the Facebook side. So here we go. I knew it. So we're going to stay away from YouTube right now. It's Teandra. It's Teandra. We, we're going to stay away from YouTube right now. What we're going to do, let's cut to a song real quick. We're going to come back. We're going to introduce everybody. We're already 12 Again. minutes in. Now, we know what we're going to do. Yeah, let's play one song, then we're going to get to this. Today's theme for... Um, for Wake Up St. Louis, outside of our, I mean, this is our musical theme, I would say, outside of our discussion for today, because everybody knows today we're discussing uh, when the bullied responds. Mm. So, uh, yeah, mm. when the bullied My responds, Lord. the one who was uh, being bullied responds yeah. when he reacts yes. or when they react. So, but our musical theme for today, we're going to play and feature music from all former St. Louis artists. Everybody who used to live in St. Louis and who has That's moved so on. Nice. Traders. That's all nice. the traders. So nice. This is the Trader Show. <laughs> right. Trader Show. Benedict Arnold. So we're going to get this kicked off. Make sure they play my CD. With Joel Terry Lester. Uh, who is... <laughs> well, I think he lives in New York. He moves somewhere else. Right. He's, just, he's the pioneer of being a trader. <laughs> right. Now he okay. traded on New York. Right. Joel Terry Lester, right here on Wake Up St. Louis, Me Too Music, Sunday morning show. Oh, 
yeah, that is Joel Lester. Thanks to Ernest, he gave us the information. She's not. He's now in uh, Houston. Houston, Houston, Texas. Houston. Yeah. So formerly of St. Louis, formerly of New York, now, now in Houston. Houston. Double trader. That's Joel. Triple. <laughs> <laughs> Might have went somewhere else. <laughs> Joel Lester. Hey. Oh, loyalty. So today, everybody knows we are talking to. Um, we are here today, and we're talking about. What did we say it is again? When the bully responds, when the bully reacts, the bully. So we got some special guests in here this morning, and uh, I'm going to go around the table. I want to start with Miss Tiandra. Yay. Come on, introduce yourself. Tell us what your position is. Every, you know, all of that. Everybody mm. knows Tiandra does our Yay. Me Too Music Minute every week. Why am I waving at the, the right, future? Right, well, she's the waving. The future, <laughs> Dr. Bland. The future, Dr. Bland. That's yeah. me. But most people don't know... Uh, was she going to be a doctor? Yeah. So <laughs> fill us in, Tiandra. Well, I will prayerfully get my doctorate in educational um, administration. Um, I've been studying um, post, pretty much post um, music, um, um, getting really into the mind of, of how students learn. And because I'm a musician, I do believe that all students should participate in a music type program. Um, and it's helped students um, to learn in all the areas. But, um, Really, I just want to finish. My heart is um, <laughs> right there, but my heart is really with um, our students and especially those who um, may not get the attention or they may not have the, um, somebody to advocate. So I've been in education for almost 20 years. Um, the last eight years, I've been an assistant principal. I've always worked in an urban school setting, K through 12. Um, and my heart is really about help. So many students don't have anybody um, to advocate for them. And so um, this subject is really um, important to me, and I do have strong, a strong opinion um, about what we're going to discuss today. So did I do you, Did look you say what your it. position is, where you work now? Uh -huh. I'm an assistant principal. I'm at Riverview Gardens High School. Riverview I've been Gardens there for eight School. years as an administrator prior to that. I taught in Normandy where I went to school. Woo -woo. Um, I taught music. Bikes, <laughs> I see Amos do Isaac, gospel do artist. He says, good morning from Detroit, and I know he went to, to yeah, Normandy, boy. too. Yes. Yeah, boy, don't do that. Yeah, boy, don't, don't do, do that. that. Don't do <laughs> This you don't want to do. This could be your day. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> all right, so then that's Tiandra. Y'all, so y'all, now you all have a inlet, and you know what our Me Too Music uh, host, Me Too Music Minute host, uh, the future Dr. Bland, what she does. To her right, to my left, we have my brother, my boy. Welcome to the stage for, like, Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> the one and only, Shante. Yeah. yeah. Tell us something, Sean. Tell us about what you do. What's up? What's up? Yeah. Everybody sees Sean around town. He plays uh, piano, keyboard. He's a songwriter. But tell everybody what you do. <clears throat> so my main profession is... Lift your I'm, mic up, Sean, a little bit. All right, cool. My main profession is I'm, I'm a counselor, and um, I've been doing counseling for about 10 years. And so um, God has led me to that because um, after I graduated uh, from, from my undergrad, I initially thought I was going to go to the NFL. You know, I played football, and I'm mostly known for playing sports. But um, it was just a strong call to get into education. And actually, my first job was um, I went back to my high school, Pattonville High School, and um, uh, my my building administrator, administrator at the time is Dr. Marion. He's actually the superintendent now leaving from um, St. Charles uh, uh, Public Schools. And... Um, he said, look, I think you need to do this. I think you need to do this. And so, um, which led me to counseling, and uh, that's what I do now. I'm a counselor at uh, Buddha Elementary School. and uh, Buddha? Buddha. Buddha. Oh, okay. Sorry, I said Buddha. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to Buddha? I was like, wow. So, Buddha Elementary School. I've been, <laughs> I I've been say, in the Rittner. other issues that I didn't know about. <laughs> oh, I've God. been in the Rittner School District for uh, five years, and it's been amazing. And so, uh, Weren't I'm, you like the... Principal for summer school. Yeah, I was or a principal like summer school, yeah. and uh, God just, you know, God just really opened up some doors, and um, I'm excited about that. I am finishing up because I, um, I have my master's in counseling, and I have, my, I have an MBA, but I'm finishing up my admin and, and getting my, I'm gonna get my doctor in education as well. So, yep. So we have them in today. The they're representing, and Alvin is not here yet. And <laughs> Alvin, and people don't know, Alvin was a school teacher at mm -hmm. like one of the behavioral schools or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. So Alvin has a lot of experience. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so out of all people, people don't get it. Ain't that so ironic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, he has one of the biggest behavioral disorders. Oh. Right. Man, when he was working there, man, just to see his face, man. <laughs> Look who's leading us, y'all. 
<laughs> but but so that we had to balance it out with some people with some sense with Tiandra and Sean. Uh, what they call you at school, Principal Bland? Principal Bland. Miss Bland. Bland. Miss Bland. They call you Mr. People. Tate. John. Yep, Mr. There Tate. And Mr. so we, we had to get some people that represent the school district and, and staff and all of that. But then sitting to Sean's right to my left, we have Sister Cynthia Hilliard, the grandmother of Miles Frierson. Miles Morning. is the one who actually inspired this show uh, for today. His mother is in uh, Dallas. She went yesterday, didn't she? Yeah. Carlos Hilliard. We call her Muffy. <laughs> Muffy went to uh, Dallas yesterday, so she couldn't be with us. But there was no better person. I, I would honestly, actually myself, I prefer his grandmother to be here because she got a little bit more sense than her daughter. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay, let me say it like this. She comes across as though she has a little bit more sense. She can, she can hold it together a little bit better than Muffy, so she'll be here telling the story. Go on and pull the mic to you, Sister C, baby. We, I call her Sister C, baby, y'all. But that's Sister Cynthia. I don't Cynthia. want to touch it because I don't want you to say I All right. So come on, introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. I am uh, Cynthia Hilliard, uh, better known to the community of East St. Louis, South Sea baby. Sea, baby. <laughs> um, I am the grandmother of Miles Frierson. Like he said, I'm the mother of Carlos Hilliard, and um, I'm a firm, firm believer what is right is right, and what is wrong is wrong. Absolutely. My uh, motto to my grandchildren is, if I have to step up in the school, make sure you're right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so we got Miles. Miles, greet the people one more time. Hello, my name is Miles Ferguson. Boy, you were growing up, man. Your voice has got a little deep <laughs> oh, and everything. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to give my side real quick of what I know about the story that inspired today's show. I'm going to give my side, and then I'm going to have Sister, C Sister Cynthia. I'm, I'm trying to okay. stay with her name. Uh, I'm going to have her jump in and correct me or... So let me just give you my side, what I heard on the street, because you know, you know, <laughs> I got, got my connections in in, in the Belleville you. School District, I right? Got you. Okay. So I'm I come home on it's like a Wednesday or on Thursday. Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. I come home on a Tuesday. So my phone starts ringing. My daughter comes home because my daughter Lauren goes to school with Miles. My daughter comes home. Phone is ringing. I now by the way, I got to say this. I used to be on the 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 parent. Uh, PTL. Parent Advisory Board. Mm. I used to be on the Parent Advisory Board at this school where literally it's like only 12 of us on this whole board. It's like four parents. It's the the the, the two principals, from one from each school, um, the superintendent, mm -hmm. and somebody else. So we're the only ones that get to sit in the room and hash out stuff and make decisions. Well, they make us feel like we're there to make decisions. Mm -hmm. The truth is no. Mm -hmm. No, they we're just there. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just gonna be honest. We're just there <clears throat> for show. To mm -hmm. be honest, we're there to you know. It's unfortunate. So anyway, yes. so my point is, I got a few connects in the school district. So I get home, and 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 everybody know Miles is my nephew. So they're like, your nephew, little Mike Tyson. I was like, huh, <laughs> Mike Tyson? They say, yeah. They say, you know, he's been getting picked on and. He hadn't said anything. They said he he just snapped. He went. They went too far this particular day. Hmm. He said he didn't say a word. He just stood up, walked over, and I'm trying to be respectful because there's still other people involved. But he he just started swinging. Let me just say that he just started swinging. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> you know, from a school standpoint, we know it's wrong. From an Uncle Street Justice standpoast, it's like. Uncle Street, yes, hey. sir. <laughs> there we go. Like yes, sir. But as a result, Miles has broken what? Two fingers on your hand? Uh, the bone in his lower hand, up under his pinky finger, and chipped something over on the other side. There. So now, yeah, if you swing it hard enough, just a boxer break. Yeah, if you mm -hmm. swing it hard enough, that's rage. That's mm -hmm. that's pain. That's, that, mm -hmm. that's yes, hurt. Yes. That's pinned up. Yeah, and so. Okay, take it from there, Sister C, baby. Am I, is that story pretty much? Basically, you're pretty much right. Yeah, this is something that has been going on since the beginning of school. And uh, we kind of sat down and hashed something out the other day. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, the superintendent kind of agreed with us in the end. This is something that started a few years ago mm -hmm. when no names. the granddaughter okay. <laughs> was in the same teacher's classroom. Mm -hmm. I received a 
message one day that she was being disrespectful. Your granddaughter. My granddaughter was right. being disrespectful. So as a grandparent, like I said, if I had to step up in there, you better be right. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're doing up there that you're being disrespectful? Because coming from my granddaughter, it was hard for me to see. But <clears throat> I tried to see it as a parent. And I try to see the teacher side as well. Mm -hmm. So it was explained to me, my granddaughter is left-handed. When she writes, she sits with her legs crossed with her right hand under her chin, and this is how she writes. Mm -hmm. So the teacher asked her to uncross her legs because she was showing body language that was being disrespectful to her. And she did not, <clears throat> excuse me, she did not uncross her legs. So when it was brought to me, I told them the same thing. That's not being disrespectful. That's her nature. And to have her to uncross her leg and take her hand from under her chin, you asking her to change her persona. Uh, what's wrong with it? Is she getting to work? Oh, yeah, she's doing the work. Well, then it's a done deal. So she couldn't get anything out of that situation. So when the school year uh, started in 2017, and she found out that the brother of this student was mm -hmm. in a room. Well, I didn't get her, so I'm going to try this one. Well, this one she was kind of lucky at, not even blessed. She was lucky <laughs> because we're on a dif different side of the road. Right. Now. Um, so from the beginning of the school, we get all kind of crazy text messages. He didn't bring a pencil to school. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, I'm at my my kids have been in that school district for 14 years. And one thing I can tell you is in the beginning of the year, they have us bring a basket of pencils. So pencils, mm -hmm. tissue, everything. So that way, if you forget something, you have your box and stuff that That's you go to. Got it. So was his pen, were, his, were, you out, were you out of pencils? Were, was he out of pencils in his stash? Well, the thing is, if you got 20 students bringing 50 pencils, you got some pencils got in the cabinet pencils. somewhere. Not unless you took them home and put them in your personal collection. Did you take them home, Miles? No. Okay, I just want to know. We just want to make sure everything's clear. Then one day. Um, and I'm not here to attack. We not, I'm not here. Uh, Sister C Baby is, but I'm not here to attack the uh, school <laughs> district and the teachers. Attack. I just want to get the facts. That's all. I, I, I'm not here to attack. As a matter of fact, you know, I just wanted some um, end to other than May 25th. I just wanted an uh, end to, to this here thing because my thing is I'm the type of person you put me in the dark room or sit me in the corner somewhere, I'm going to do some thinking. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things come up. Why is she doing this? Mm -hmm. Why is the principal not? Why is he just supporting the teacher? I mean, I know as administrators, they're there to support their staff. Mm -hmm. But then you got to look at this kid. If this kid's steady picking on the same child, well, we've had, uh, it wasn't so bad the last couple of years, you know, three years ago. For miles. I lost three, yeah, for miles. I lost three siblings back to back. Right. Well, emotionally, that wore him down. Right. So this group started then picking mm -hmm. on him. But it just, the last, it got to this year, it got to the point it just got worse. So Miles mm -hmm. is, um, you know, one of those kids with the 501, you know, mm -hmm. that type thing. 504. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, he has one. He's supposed to have one of those plans. Can you right? explain that to the audience? Uh, so I don't any, know any kind of way? One of so them can explain that. Yeah, so 504, so. 504 is a, um, is a civil right. And so what it is, <clears throat> it falls under the IDEA, mm -hmm. uh, the Individual uh, uh uh, Disability Education Act. Act, and so you have either the 504 or you have the IEP, and so the IEP, yeah, 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 <laughs> they both fall under the, 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 yeah, you can have both actually, but in this particular case, you say that he has a 504 plan, and and what that does is set up accommodations, um, for him either physically, or um, if he has a health, a issue. health issue, an impairment, it sets up accommodations that the school right. will have to support legally. Legally, well. To all the schools. day, well. So before you say that, then. All schools. So if he, all so we kind of got to be a little clear law. here without, mm -hmm. without giving away all business away. Mm -hmm. Why would a child <coughs> need or have a five hundred four? Um. In Miles' case. In his case, he was diagnosed with. Um, see, that's one. Of the Asperger's. Is Asperger's. Okay. Uh, is it yeah. Asperger's? Something. Like Something like okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it can be Asperger's. It can um, be. They all fall under the. Um, fall under, yeah. They, well, it was, he was diagnosed with something that fell. I can't explain okay. it. That's okay. his mom's 
you know, but it's a plan in place. Yeah, but That's a plan, plan. But it's a plan in place. Everyone in place. should abide. By. It's supposed to be a plan in place. Gotcha. Well, you know, he's um, the type of person. Well, as far as his academics, he's pretty good with the academics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, that social, <laughs> that social life. You know, mm-hmm. when he gets backed in the corner, it's like, oh, exactly. he exactly. cannot stand exactly. a lot of noise. Exactly. Um, even when we're at home mm-hmm. and he's doing homework, he'd be like, mm. mm-hmm. well, we know we got to go. And that's due to his diagnosis. Yeah. And they all fall under the spectrum of autism. And yeah. so right. that's, that's one of the, that is, that is one of the symptoms of his diagnosis. And so in the 504 that should support, you should have some, some written accommodations to support that. And the team should have been there when it was exactly. written. I just had a pre-meeting and in the meeting, when I say the team, I'm talking about the counselor, the eyes, the principal, so I can understand okay. too, the parent, the student, um, even if there's another district personnel. But once that plan is put in place, because this wasn't a meeting to have a plan, he actually has a plan in place, because that's what I hear you saying. Mm-hmm. So every school official should have known that. That's not a oops, I didn't know, especially the home teacher. Absolutely. Hmm. Yep. So that may, that's maybe, you know, when you. I don't know the story, but just kind of picking right. away when you just want to get to like legality, mm-hmm. that's something that should be discussed. Yeah. Well, let me that tell you. That piece, you know, that's, starting off. That's one of the things. When it's when this thing started kicking up mm-hmm. and uh, Miles would have the all bursting class, we even got to, uh, oh, we got, she has, Carlos, my daughter, had several messages mm-hmm. that were sent to her from time to time. One was he just stirring his face. Mm-hmm. Duh, he has that plan, but. <laughs> Come on. He probably needs time to process. That's Right. They just process time. And an educator should see that's process time. That's all it is. Continue on Mm -hmm. with class. That's not a target time. He's Mm -hmm. taking too long to get started. Mm -hmm. He's doing this. And this has been an ongoing little things like this through the school year. Um, uh, We... And then when we talk about bullying here, we... um, he was supposed to have been observed uh, one time. He and the little girl was outside the class with one of the students. You know, kids do the little hand signs, and this same mm-hmm. teacher observed him doing gang signs. That's you, what she says. That's gang what signs. she said, and she called the principal in, assistant, assistant principal in, and he concurred with her. What do you all know about gang signs? I'm from East St. Louis. <laughs> Run, walk, talk, East St. Louis. Love me some East St. Louis. Lived in the central west end of St. Louis off a of page. And somebody walk up to me, I'd be like, how you doing? Hmm. I don't know what a gang sign is. So how, what makes you know? And this is the kind of stuff we have been dealing with. Any kind of thing. The so they were doing the handshake kind of like what the NBA players do? Is that kind of like yes, what it was, yes, Miles? Yes. All that? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's just all kind of little things that. Did the little girl get called to the office in that instance? No, no. Uh, well, you know what? Let me take that back. I don't know because, mm-hmm. quote and unquote, they always say, well, you don't know how we're handling the other students. And they can't discuss how they handle right. the other Well, they students. can't, and I can understand that. Now, here's this another thing. We have been trying to get meetings with the principal, mm-hmm. the superintendent, Miles, the social worker, and this teacher all year long. But the teacher refused, no, let me take it back. The principal refuses to allow us to meet with the teacher hmm. because she's intimidated by my daughter, who may weigh 200, but the teacher is the professional bodybuilder. <laughs> but I got to jump in. Your daughter is a little. Well, I said 200 plus. You know, now. but I ain't talking about what I'm talking oh. about, you know, personality wise. She can well, be a little intimidating. She, 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 well, I mean, it's, she it's tries to act nature. soft in, in the beginning, <laughs> but it comes out. So but I can you know, I can see why. It goes back to an old saying somebody told me 40 some years ago, and I come with don't judge the book by looking at its cover, read the book. But you know, but, but, but you know, <laughs> Carlos, so your daughter, sorry. Muffy, you know, she yeah, can come I across can a little strong. But I need yeah. to hear me. Well, you know, you know, be, basically be at this, you know, down through the bunch, she just wanted to be heard. Yeah. She wanted to know, just talk with the teacher. I mean, she had no problem with meeting with the teacher with staff. Right. She had no problem. I mean, I would have taken off and said, just what is causing? What is the problem? Have, guys, you just have 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 you guys had any meetings before? Mm-hmm. 
with before this incident? Yeah, before this incident. Have you had anything. any meetings this year? Oh, we've had meetings. To... Every meeting we've had has been with the principal, the assistant principal, and the superintendent. Okay. 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 Yes. Every okay. meeting has been with sense. the, <clears throat> but never the teacher. We get third party. Now, they know I'm the wrong person to come back with third party. Because I, I look at a lot of law mm -hmm. and order justice. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, my, first job, my, my first job with the government, I worked with the Department of Defense. And I had a lot of um, um, work. I did work with JAG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know that third party uh, mm -hmm. don't fly in court. Mm -hmm. So every time we get an incident and we take it back, and she said so and so, and we give it to the principal. The principal come back and say, "No, Miles lied. It wasn't this way." Mm -hmm. And she said this. So she has. So she's not appearing, but she's submitting a statement. Yeah. Yes, verbally, she's not writing anything. So after mm -hmm. this incident, have you all met after this incident? Because this is with the principal, the assistant principal, and the superintendent. That was this and week, right? Uh, no, this week was another meeting after this. We met when we took him back to school after the three-day suspension after this. We met with, she met with the principals. This week, when we took him back to school, we met with the superintendent only. This week, mm -hmm. she had to meet with the principals. <clears throat> So still the teacher, the teacher was supposed to meet with the superintendent on Thursday, but she was ill on Thursday. The teacher was. The teacher was, but she showed back up Friday. And I'm sure, I'm sure Mr. Tate, Ms. Bland, I gotta, I'm gonna keep this professional okay. today. I'm <laughs> sure they, I'm sure they get a lot of parents. Y'all yeah. talk to us for a minute this about how parents. This is similar. Yeah, I, and I'm sure it almost everything sounds daily. Yeah, <laughs> so I've gotten every I'm type sure of grandparents, parent, every type of situation. Yeah, right. But the number one thing I go into a meeting thinking, because, again, I work in an urban school, the first thing that I think, I look at me as a parent. Right. And I am something. Mm -hmm. So I have to think advocating looks different. So I go into a meeting. I became an educator for the children first. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. are first, mm -hmm. and that's my position. Now, it's gone, it looks a little odd at times, but we have to start with the children first. Mm -hmm. So a parent's anger is just advocating. It just looks different. And many times parents are upset or grandparents or families are upset if they feel like they're not heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't don't look at what they say. Don't look at don't look at how it comes off. You need to hear their heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you get to the bottom of the mm -hmm. you know, get to the, the bottom line. And I'm wondering, do you feel any solution out of the meeting? Because it's like a, I fear I'm hearing a lot of meetings, but I'm not hearing solution right. oriented, um, you know, sessions. Every time we go to a meeting and we think we come up with a solution, okay. like we went to one meeting back um, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And the solution was to have Miles and this particular teacher to sit down and have lunch or drink a soda or some water together mm -hmm. and talk. <clears throat> Well, that did not happen because on the way into the class, she stops him at the door and says, what could we do about this? Per the principal, first she said it happened. Then he got caught up in the stories, and he had to retract and say, well, I passed by the classroom. No, that didn't happen either. Has anybody ever sat down with Miles and you know, had in those meetings and had him express how he feels. It didn't yes. get to that until after this happened. Miles wrote a letter during his home three days mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and took it back to school. I had a copy in the car too. Um, took it back to school when we returned him to school with the superintendent. Mm -hmm. Miles didn't let us state what you wrote because I can't. Yeah, come on, um, Miles. Yeah, I said feel, that huh? I don't like how people disrespect me mm -hmm. and stuff. And like it's been very mm -hmm. difficult for me this year. Mm-hmm. What else? Don't continue. Um one of the principals told me that I was gonna end up in jail mm. because of my violent behavior. And the teacher <coughs> just doesn't like me for some reason. I don't know what mm -hmm. it is. And um I have I never have any problems with mm -hmm. any other teachers. Hmm. I don't care who's ever going to be your principal, who's going to ever be your teacher. You're going to be great. So know that you will be great, Absolutely. okay? Don't even worry about that. <clears throat> you won't go. You're going to be great. Um, 
we all going to, we get to the goal different. That's all. So I know that you're younger, but you, you, I see you, you can advocate. Mm -hmm. You're going to be great. Don't let anybody, I know we talk about our peers, but adults, you don't let anything that's negative come in. You have a lot that you're already dealing with already, mm -hmm. and you're doing great. Allow your grandmother and your mother to do the talking. You allow them to. And I know that that particular day, enough was just probably enough. And I mm -hmm. think we may handle things a little differently on the Missouri and the Illinois side. Yeah, so some things I'm going to refrain from saying. But what I will say is this. Um, you can't let that sit on what you're trying to do. Because we don't know why the adults are making some of the decisions that they're making. And you know what? I make mistakes sometimes as a principal. I do. I, I make mistakes. But know that you will be great. You're going to do great things. Mm -hmm. We just got to get over this hump. <clears throat> and what this is going to show you is perseverance. You're going to have instructors and uh, professors. You're going to work for people yeah. <laughs> that are so that are unseemly. That's true. So know that this is just one of those. You're going to remember this because this is a, a big event in life. But what we have to do going to grandmothers know that our rights there's some type of um, parental advisory for illinois where they'll actually represent yes. you i know what it looks like over here but, um there is a and i will make it my goal mm -hmm. monday i will find that information and i'm okay. gonna uh, submit it to you okay. there's an advisory where they advocate for parents because there's some le uh le you know legal lingo they're mm -hmm. using in those meetings i know it we do mm -hmm. it, we do it that's time. but the bottom line is bullying it's not you know, he had a fight, and they But you know what's him. crazy so you know, far? The bottom line we is haven't gotten to the bullying. Exactly. Uh, and that's the why kids I'm, I'm strong. I'm, I'm, because I'm, the we're on the staff the, level, the teachers too. Yeah. Bully. And <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. We, that's, that's what, what My thing is, we can get past the teacher being and doing this. The children, because now a couple of little boys, when they started, I, me and the parents, you know, I'm the type of person. I can pull you in with love in a minute. Come in, little dude. <laughs> what is your problem? Right. What's going on between you and Miles? And so and so and so and so. Um, all right, so I ain't got to worry. About so, the, but the little boy that he got in the fight with, that's why I said we got to know who our friends are and who our friends are. Mm -hmm. But supposed to be his friend. Mm -hmm. They've been in the same grade since mm -hmm. second grade, and they done hung out together. This happened on a Tuesday, and Friday night they hung out at the Edge. Because they're kids. And um, <laughs> the Tuesday, edge, which is, a, he which is a, like a movie theater and yeah, arcade yeah, where kids hang out and build yeah. yeah. some of everything. Right. Yeah, well, so they spent time kicking it. Outside, outside of school. Outside of school. Because they're children. He That's comes what to the Even house. after that incident. No, this, well, was no, before, this was the before the incident. Before the incident. Okay. Before the incident. Okay. Um, about two weeks, maybe a month before this incident happened, this same little boy and another little boy was at the house on a Saturday playing basketball. Then they returned Sunday. Well, Saturday, I was gone all day long. Sunday, I come home. I said, who got a bike laying in my yard? So I found that was one of the little boys' bike. I was good, but don't leave it on the wall. So <laughs> I was in the house cooking dinner. My house come in there. He said, Granny, Granny, where your little pink baseball bat? I said, what? He said, they don't yank my ball. I said, they ain't yank your ball. So I guess my house going to get them. So anyway, I said, go. So I cut the stove off. And uh, I don't trust anybody at my house cook. But anyway, uh, I cut the <laughs> stove off and went on outside to see. And they had ran. They, they was walking pretty fast because they were nowhere in sight. Mm -hmm. From where I stay on 74 to Foley, I didn't see them. Mm -hmm. So I got in the car. And I went and called up with them by the golf course. Come on, get back in the car. Let's go. Get back in the car. So I took them back to the house. I said, hey, one of y'all was on the bike. Where the bike at? They looking at each other crazy. I said, I don't, uh-uh, looking at crazy, I ain't talking to him. What a bike. Oh, it was raggedy. I didn't want it no way. I said, what do you mean you didn't want it? And I just told Miles to throw it behind the apartment building. <laughs> oh, but where's Miles' ball? ball? He threw it in the, in the weeds. I said, oh, okay, let's go. So we rode on back to the house. I rode back there in the apartment building where the bike was. I said, why did you throw your bike away, son? What are your parents going to say when you get home without your bike? Duh. I said, duh, ain't the answer. What, what they going to say? So neither one of them said anything about this bike. Come find out the bike was stolen. I was about to say that bike was stolen. The bike was stolen. So Monday, when they get back to school, well, I made Miles go in the weeds and get his own bowel and, and take it in the house. And anyway, I sent him back. God didn't even take him back where I picked him up at. Y'all get gone. And get that bike <laughs> off my out of my neighborhood. 
Monday they goes to school, and this is when it really started getting mm-hmm. intense mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. that day. Because Miles snitched and told me, mm-hmm. first they wanted Miles to hide the bike behind my shed. They wanted him to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And when he told me what they said in front of them, they started calling them names, and it started from there. Okay. So, and every time this one little boy is with a group of little boys or somebody <clears throat> different, you know, he's got to show off. You now, know, he's one but, of the boys. That's the boy he hung out with at the edge. At the edge. Mm-hmm. At the edge. But he was a part of the group that mm-hmm. had the bikes, st- mm-hmm. the, the stolen mm-hmm. bike. Exactly. And all that. Okay. Exactly. So, but um, now we got to be we got to be real here now. Mm-hmm. Did Miles know the bike was stolen from the beginning? Miles, no. okay. he didn't know the bike was stolen. He didn't have no sense. He just thought the boy, the boy told him the bike was broke and he didn't want it no more. <laughs> but but, that but, but my, my thought was, no, the bike ain't broke. He didn't want it. He saw that bike on my deck. That um, what's the name of that bike on my? It's, it's one of them kind of expensive bikes. I bought that at the at uh. Used to, <laughs> and he probably was gonna try to get that bike off my deck. So, um, <laughs> so what you're saying is all of this went to the school. Went on, went on to the school. And went that's on when the, the fight happened on Tuesday. On Miles got rolled up for during the week because he said something. They called him a snitch and some names. Miles said something back. The teacher put him out, put him in detention. All of it just started. We start getting emails from there. So this leads yeah. to this point. So this is this is this is good. Shine, Mr. Tate, shine. <laughs> so. Okay, so oh, let me ask you this, Sister C, baby, Sister Cynthia. Did you all at any time ever talk to staff about the bullying that was going on before oh, yes. this incident? All the time. Okay, so I, now we got that information. <clears throat> mm-hmm. We see that she's reported stuff. I they've even reported to do stuff. Do a little conference, a little, little thing for them on bullying. Okay, see, so they've done all of this. So they did a, they did a, um, they did a mediation. When you said I they. I don't think they did. The staff. No, they didn't. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. The That's number one. That's the first step. And, always and, mediate. Yeah, always. always mediate. And so. Because they got to uh, go to school <clears throat> together. Nobody was kicked out forever. Yeah. But let me say this, Sean, before you get in. Because Sean, me and Sean talked about this yesterday. And he said some really, really, really good stuff. He said some good stuff um, yesterday. And, and before he brings all of that, I want to I wanna say. Uh, Man, I started reading the comment and lost my thought. You talking about mediate, blah, 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 blah. This is what I want to say. Because I've been a part of the Belleville, Rob's son was in the same school exactly. district. So Rob has a, he kind of understands too how things work up there. Now I got to say this. I am, I've said this a million times on this show. I'm not one of those pro black, anti this. You know, I'm not one of the ones that jumps on the Black Lives Matter or vote for a president because <laughs> he's black, you know, stuff like that. Right. But I must say this. You kind of got to know the background here just a little bit. And I know Sean has looked into some policy for Illinois, too, right? We're going to talk about for a minute. But yeah. before we do that, because I want Sean to address this, and I want even Miss Bland, Tiandra, to hear this as well. And I want the audience to hear this. Belleville is a neighboring town to East St. Louis, okay? Everybody knows it's no secret. It's, it's national news. East St. Louis crime rate is mm-hmm. extremely high. Murder rate, you know, we go back and forth between but with being the murder capital of the world, you know, I mean, murder capital of the United States, all of the above. So with that being said, Belleville is a neighboring town, which one main street links us. Right. West Main is State Street in East St. Louis, and it becomes West Main in Belleville, okay? Wow. One bus line. Well, the thing is this. A lot of families in East St. Louis who are looking for better lives and better housing, better schools, move from East St. Louis to to Belleville. Now, what I can tell you is, like, when my kids 14 years ago first started in the Belleville School District, I look back at the the school pictures, and it would be my daughter and maybe two other blacks in all white. Now let's go look at Miles' school pictures, and it's probably m- more, it's all black almost, and maybe two or three or four. How, how many white students would you have in your class, Miles, um, about? More than black. Maybe. You have more whites than black? Um, I think so, a little bit. I think. Oh, so it's even. No. No, it's not even. No. You have to see it. No, you, you have, have to see it. Picture. It's not. It's definitely not. All the staff. It's absolutely not. Okay. So, but there with that being said, that, that's why that's the point. See, I, that's I, where I I'm getting to, Sean. Mm-hmm. That's where I mm-hmm. and I figured you can weigh in on this. Mm-hmm. This is the thing. I know. We it's had a principal. They hired a black principal. And I'm just gonna put it out there. Mm. Young black guy, and and they literally hired him. 
and told him they wanted him to be kind of like an uncle mm-hmm. to these kids. Really stripped a lot of power, but they needed somebody because they didn't know how to. You got to understand, there was a great exodus from East St. Louis into Belleville within the last you know few years, mm-hmm. and they didn't know how to handle these black kids from the inner city. Mm-hmm. So you expect it to be a lot of a lot of trouble, a lot of issues, and a, a lot of mistakes being made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, at least know that much about this school district. They're in a transition yeah. where they really don't know how to handle, you it's know. It's everywhere. I just don't say exactly. it. Exactly. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. So with that, Sean, now <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about. So, so, so the number one thing is teachers need to be, especially our Caucasian teachers and educators, they need to. Somebody ask how many black teachers. I'm sorry. Before you go into that. Okay. Miles, could you count? Um, Talking about in the whole district? Three, three years ago, we didn't have not one. At your school. At our school. How many, wow. In, in how your, your school, school, how many black teachers now? Do you think? No. I don't think there's. No black teachers? teachers? Well, you're talking about like. Teachers, no not, teachers. Not, not the, no not teachers. the janitors. Not a. Um, what, what, Mr. Wynn? What is Wynn? He did teaching. He's still a staff member. He's staff. That's it's probably it's about like two or three Between staff the two schools, it's probably teacher. five. Okay, between the two schools, or uh-huh. the three schools, technically. Which three? It's three schools. It's MG, it's Harmony, Intermediate, and then Ellis. Oh, they, mm-hmm. Well, they kind of right. combine it. They combine it, but it technically it's like three yeah. schools, right? In two buildings. Four, right. So go ahead, Sean. Mm-hmm. You say so for about it's four, four. teachers. Mm-hmm. Between, the four, between the three schools? I give them five. Okay, wow. between three schools now. Wow. Now, come on, Sean. Tell us something. Cultural, culturally response Just intervention Just for our Caucasian teachers. It's okay. They don't know how to respond culturally to our kids and that's why you see the spike in suspensions that's why you see the spike in every just just how they interact the behaviors and how they look at our kids Mm -hmm. and so that's the number one thing when you guys were talking about the situation that's why i was just sitting here said well that is a leadership issue because because you have to you have to train your staff on how to support your student population if you have a high percentage of blacks it's part, if you have a high percentage of black boys mm-hmm. you have to be you have to have the cultural response intervention instruction as a as a as a teacher that's right to know how to respond to our kids and that's why we're that's why that's one of I think that's the foundation of why we're facing the issue that we're facing within your school. Exactly. Because the number one thing is they would have got those boys together and did a, a mediation and say, Look, y'all need to squash this mm-hmm. and then they also know his diagnosis. Exactly. And understanding that he is he is responding in, to his diagnosis. Mm-hmm. He's that's responding right. yes, he is. with a kid that has Asperger's. You know, and so people need to be informed and that's one of the biggest things that that cripples uh, school districts mm-hmm. and cripples not only our kids but our families mm-hmm. because we don't have information. That's you can go up there and really, really, you can really, you can really, you can really show show out. You have to know your power too. You could have said, "Where's the mediation? Where's the anti-bullying form that I need to fill out?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, I'm telling you some stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I need a form to fill out because I need you to do an investigation. And that's going to go directly to the superintendent. Mm-hmm. Then it's going to go to the Belleville West Police Department. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's, it's legislation it's out a, now for a anti- bully. It's a bullying. policy mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. You got to know. We, and that's what I'm saying. You have to know <laughs> the law. Take so they take that serious. We have to. So it's whenever bullying. somebody say yeah. bullying, even it, it may not even be bullying. Mm-hmm. It may not We're even be bullying. Got to investigate it anyway. Got to investigate mm-hmm. it anyway because it, now it's a legal issue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a legal issue, and so you, ha- in, in in this, you know. I, okay, say this, Sean. You got to <coughs> say this. Sean told me this yesterday, and I've been saying this. I said this to your daughter. I said this to Carlos on the phone two weeks ago when we talked. I talked about how the one thing I like, especially when I was on the parent uh, advisory board. Um, we see a lot of parents come up there and try to intimidate. We see a lot of our black parents. <laughs> try to come up there and just yeah. talk loud and try mm-hmm. to intimidate exactly. and intimidate. like we're going to get our way right mm-hmm. but we see some of our white parents come up there and they may talk in a way that seems disrespectful but at the end of the day they get 
results. Mm-hmm. Sean, explain one of the reasons they get results. You just started explaining it. They advocate. They know the law. They know the law. Exactly. They know the law. Exactly. They go up there and they go. They give it. They give it to them. They give it to them. And they say, look, okay, this is how we're going to do this. We we pay for your salary. That's it. All right? We pay for your salary. This is what you guys need to do. You know? This is what you guys need to do. And if it's and in and, and a lot of cases, you know, it, it's it still be really small cases. But mm-hmm. when you have something like this, you got the law behind you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So they're going to move. Mm-hmm. They're going to move. You got the law behind you. You know? And so I just want to encourage you. Get an advocate. Exactly. It's okay if you don't know. Get an advocate. Because I know many of our parents, they, they don't know. And, you know, I'm sitting here list. I totally agree with you because yes. we know. She said she um, agrees with Sean. Right. I totally agree with Sean because, you know, now my children, we're, they're in a school district that's it was in Normandy. They're in a district where, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, I moved where I thought my children would get a better opportunity. Um, but with that being said, because I have all black young men, mm-hmm. with that being said, I did um, speak with, I spoke with the administration to give them my, just my position in life. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the expectation that I have for the boys. Um, before I told them I was an administrator or educator, this is just my position. What is your um, outlook mm-hmm. for the children? What is your philosophy? They looked at me like what? Because you can also have an adverse um, effect when you don't advocate and you place your children in a district that's different. Yes. Yes. Um, if you don't advocate, um, they're still cornered. They're still looked over. And I needed them to know that they won't be looked over. I just want, mm-hmm. under, want you to understand that I know. We mm-hmm. all know. So it's happening all over. But because some people don't get an advocate, it's okay. They know your heart. They know mm-hmm. what you're speaking. Go off on them and then let them go up there before mm-hmm. to be that parent that goes and talks. Because the, we've heard a whole lot. And we haven't even talked about the, the part about the bully. And I think it's so unfortunate that um, the leadership um, hasn't just stepped back. Again, we make mistakes. They just making a mistake, yeah. and it's okay. Right. But step back and look at the legality of this. This is not a private school, <laughs> exactly. and you know yeah. what? Too, I know y'all don't like it, but people like you and others need to get back on the advisory council. And I'm gonna tell you why. I know I'm probably another face out there where I am, mm-hmm. but this here face is. I'm gonna ask some questions, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna say something a little different than some of the children that are still getting bussed into my baby school district. They'll tell me because they know I'm gonna say it. But we have to sit there and we have to say it because you still know law mm-hmm. and you still know um well why are they getting this particular thing why are they getting this particular thing because they get, oh no we can't you we can't do that so somebody has to still be the voice mm. i know i'm tired but mm. i still sit on those councils I, when no one at no one volunteers i'm like me me uh, because mm. somebody not just for mine because they know i'm right, gonna right, have them yeah. i'm actually doing this for the other children the out children. there in the district right right, right. can i but can i add i'm sorry let my daughter ahead, let me let me into that here my daughter worked St. Louis Public School. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things, when the bullying thing come up, she said, how do you all, or what do you all do for this? In St. Louis Public School, this is how they handle it. Well, the principal said, well, you're in St. Louis Public uh-huh. School. We're in Illinois. Mm-hmm. And, well, I thought about something when Sean was talking. I think this incident happened before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Something happened, and they got an early Christmas vacation. At the, suspension. at the school, uh-huh. at the school, it's, <laughs> then we get a letter in the mail. Oh, you suspended, man, you know. <laughs> the thing is, and I told the superintendent, and I've told the super. Oh, as a matter of fact, Tuesday this past week, I ended up calling the regional superintendent of mm-hmm. Belleville School District mm-hmm. because I was fed up. Mm-hmm. I told them, I say, now, I'm not on top of all the laws in Illinois, but I do know a lot of people. I could ask some questions, but I'm giving you all the benefit of the doubt right now. I said, because you all do know that I do know there is a law, whereas if you all cannot accommodate my grandson, you all going to have to send him to a school of my choice and pay for his (laughs) education. I say, now, I do know that there is a law. That is a law. Mm -hmm. I say, and I do know if you stand in the middle of State Street in West Maine and write my name on some paper and throw it in the air, and when it comes down, somebody's going to say, what's going on with Cynthia Hilliard? She don't play, so let's get to this. I told the regional superintendent the same thing. Stand up in your office. Walk out there in your office and call my name out three times. I said, if not two one somebody in your office gonna pull you to the side and say, "What's going on with her?" 
She huh, said, really? I like it. I, like it. I said, <laughs> you don't know who I know and who I don't know. I know either one. I don't know. If they can't settle it or take care of it, so, they want to look at the move because... Well, this is we the end of school. You know yeah, what? And what, I, I, I even to told them, let me tell you all some. I pay taxes in Belleville. I said, and I know they really don't want me in Belleville, but that's where I am. I said, but I will send them to East St. Louis District 189 if it comes to it. And the superintendent says in response, I hate that you even think like that. I said, but I will get a better response because this is another thing. We have asked, I know I have because of my, my work schedule. If he's cutting up in this woman's class so bad, let me just peep in there on him. I'm not going to do anything to him at school, but in the evening it's a different story. They so they no, that grandmother. In, in oh, grandmother, you, can't do you that. cannot go into the school. <laughs> can't do it in I can't go past the office. We uh, took him to school the other day and forgot to give him some. We were in the office already, mm -hmm. so he was just walking down the hall. Before we get out there, dude, that, that secretary was on us like 5 -0. Yeah, you can't do it in Belleville. I think Not some school districts district. are doing yeah. this because of safety things, though. Yes. Well, I can but understand, I understand that. But if I make an appointment, if I make an appointment and say I want to see him in this class, it. You just see the him. principal you can walk to. me to the door right. while right. I'm standing there with That's my hands folded. That's just not. I agree. I agree. I agree with that. I do. You all say he cutting up. You all telling me what he doing, but I'm not seeing it. So y'all, <clears throat> you all think I'm stupid and dumb. I'm taking y'all's word. Uh, uh I ain't been around for sixty years for nothing. Sixty plus. Go ahead, Sean. Can I can I get to mine? Yes. I want I I, I want you to learn from this. <laughs> yeah. All right. You got a lot of greatness in you, man. And this, and let me tell you something. Through your passion through your hurt creates passion and through your passions create solutions. You're going to be able to move from your passion. You're going to remember all this, all this stuff mm -hmm. you felt, all this stuff mm -hmm. that you went through, man, mm -hmm. at school, how you That's felt right. disenfranchised, how you felt like nobody was listening to you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to create something. It's going to create that passion that you, that's going to guide you and help you find <clears throat> your way on how you're going to, how you're going to affect, the world, how you're going to affect your community, how you're going to do that. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So I want, I, and, and let me tell you something. You're talking to somebody who was diagnosed with a learning disability. You would talk, you're talking to somebody who was diagnosed with a speech impairment. You can't even tell, right? I can't a little I, bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We cannot tell. Yeah. <laughs> but, but here's, here, this is what I want to say to you. All right, man. I was, people didn't think I was smart. I was just a football player. I ended up, I ended up going to college. I ended up getting two master's degrees. And I don't say that, I don't brag about that. But I tell you, when you put, when you go through something, I remember that hurt. I remember that. I remember That's people right. thinking I was stupid. I couldn't read. You know, a lot of our boys going to high school, reading on a third grade level. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, and so, that's why I'm so passionate about this. Two know me. I always talk about music, education, and politics. Mm -hmm. We got we. That's what that music influences people, but the policy. You understand this when you when you when you when you when you. And that's why you need to always pay attention in social studies class when they're talking about civics and mm -hmm. legislation, and all you know all the branches of government. You have to pay attention because that's how the world functions. That's right. That's how your city functions mm -hmm. yeah. and able to do these things because of those le that legislation. All right. Mm -hmm. That public policy. All right. And so I just want to encourage you in this because it's all about you. This is why we're here. We're here That's for right, you. Guys. We're here for you, man. That's right. You know, and you have don't let anything don't let this situation tear you or, or, or make you think less of yourself or what somebody or else to find you or to find you. That's man. Right. You great or your disability. You know how many people got ADHD? You know how many people that's been diagnosed them. with? Yeah, exactly. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. She said Al was diagnosed. So Ms. Bland, and I know Ms. Bland can speak on because that's what we deal with. We mm -hmm. deal with and we have to really shelter our boys. Our boys are so emotional. 
Our they are, boys are so misguided. They're the greatest. If I could just but work with the, the young men all day, I would because <laughs> they just – they are just, it's, you have so much power, and I believe that. I know we're not living in the 50s or 60s, but this is the uh, new age way of trying to silence our boys, silence our um, mm-hmm. young men, so they can't be the powerful beings that they already are. Mm-hmm. So I, ne- I just never give up on them, never, because you never, you just can't, you can't. And so know this, when you talk to them again, Excellent. you ask them about restorative justice. Grandma, you t- you ask them, you m- say it, say restorative justice. I'm gonna be talking to you too. I'll be talking. To you. We saying bye to Sean. Sean is leaving. Mr. Tate, <laughs> so you tell, you asking them, you oh, use some. I'm giving you a word. <laughs> yes. restorative, restorative justice. justice. Restorative okay. justice is a different way of um, discipline or management. In restorative justice, what you're doing is you're teaching students, you're teaching children um, another way. Why did we do this? Why not so not being punitive and punishing? Because you know suspending doesn't do anything but True. either make your child angry or it doesn't solve anything. True. Suspending you just you, you set them out of school even more where they had less of an opportunity to get, you know, the, the instruction. Mm-hmm. But you you want a restorative nation. That's why we're the way we are. We're not restorative. We mm-hmm. don't know why we were cussing. We don't know why we get so angry we don't know why and the teachers need to be a part of the restorative circles we have to teach the why we shouldn't because you know when they leave school they have to live in those those same world i have to teach my young men Mm -hmm. and women Mm -hmm. at my school how to uh, react to each other i said you know you can't curse out the Mm -hmm. job the employer you have to teach them how to live in the world how to um if i get into it with my neighbor not to go in my trunk Mm -hmm and get a gun or some nunchucks. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to teach them why you can't, and that's restorative justice. All I hear is suspend, suspend, don't mm-hmm. talk. Mm-hmm. Suspend, suspend, don't say that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the children all deserve that. Now, one thing I, I hear today, now, I know, for everybody joining us today, uh, we know this is our, an unconventional show for us for Wake Up St. Louis. Normally we're here joking, joning, laughing, playing mm-hmm. great music, giving information, news, and today is not like that. At all, you know, sometimes we have to step aside and, and just handle and address some some things and address some situations. And, and a few things I heard on today, um, I want, or a few things that I've noticed and and looked at today, I noticed the need. See, we haven't even dealt with the schoolyard situations mm-hmm. yet. We haven't, not really, with that side of bullying. Everybody knows we, you know, that's the kind of stuff as men, you know, all of us men who grew up in the 80s, you know, mm-hmm. late 70s, 80s, early 90s, we know it, it was basically just street justice. You know, we had parents that probably mm-hmm. said, it, if you didn't yeah. fight back, you get back out there or you <laughs> have to right. deal with me. You know, we dealt yeah. with that kind of stuff. And it don't necessarily work today yeah. the way it used to work because of the different policies and the mm-hmm. different things in place. And, I th- and that's there. one thing that I've gotten from today is that it's important for us to know policies, to know, okay, well, Miles, if you do go back, and respond this way, at least you know this is what's going to happen to you in school. This is what they're mm-hmm. able to do to you. Exactly. You know, right. back in the day, we could just send the kids back, mm-hmm. fight. Right. You know, it may mm-hmm. be a suspension mm-hmm. and whatever. But at the same time, when we were coming up, how many of us were bused to pretty much white schools, too? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. when I say white schools, white staffed yeah, schools. Same school. Right. Exactly. Yeah, see, so, but so I see that. And I also see the need for the parents. I, I think that's one thing we're missing. Now, let, let, now this is not this is not towards you, Sister C, baby, at all. So you know, because I know you'll pull my coattail and you'll check me if you think so. Mm-hmm. But this is not towards you. I'm talking about parents who really only see their children, their grandchildren, as the victim at all times. And that right there, now that I do have a low tolerance for that. You know, I, I think we have to admit and recognize that. Our kids could be the mm-hmm. the terrorizers at school, the, the problems mm-hmm. at school. You know, what was your part in this? What did you right. do right. to right. right? And see, so I know that's not you because you said earlier. Now, if mm-hmm. I come to this school, you better be right. You better be right. That's exactly. Which lets me know that's right. that you recognize mm-hmm. and realize mm-hmm. that that they have the ability to to be kids right. and to, mm-hmm. to 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 mess up. Mm-hmm. So out of that, I I see. I see the need for, for, for better parenting, for our parents to be involved and to know what's going on, you know, instead of just turning our kids loose. Now, that's, that's one thing I've always said about Belleville. The thing about Belleville is the parents move from one place. They move to Belleville. This is what I used to see. I'm not saying this is for everybody. But I used to see, especially in my neighborhood, uh, 
because we were the first blacks on my block. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, we have several. Mm-hmm. And when they started moving in, you know, we were the ones with the basketball court. So mm-hmm. we let all the kids come there. Mm-hmm. And so I knew all the, the black kids in the neighborhood moving in. But one thing I noticed that a lot of black parents, because they move here, now you have mortgages, you know, you have all of this. So they spend more time working. They're doing overtime right, right, and doing that. And the kids are pretty much, honestly, no, yeah, no yeah. knock to my neighbors because you were, you're trying to, it's like a catch-22. You're trying to do it better for your 22. children. It is yeah, a but then there's a consequence to you trying to make a better life for your kids. It's they, like just being a, it's almost like being an absent parent with the families, with the children. They don't, they're raising themselves mm-hmm. in another situation. Mm-hmm. You actually really have to be a part of it. Actually, we think, oh, I've moved here. I've arrived mm-hmm. in our minds. Not I've arrived, but right. whew, they're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. I took this. I took a very different approach. I said, I gotta up my game even more now. When y'all moved to that mansion? Yes. No. <laughs> no, you said that's a mansion. No, no, yes, no, no. She said yes. She said yes. No, that's a mansion. I thought you said something else. But I knew. How I had many to blacks really in your up. neighborhood? It's just us, right? Right. Now. It's a mansion. <laughs> well, but I knew that I really have mm. to. They don't care about your my background. They don't mm. care. They. Because my son had a different last name, mm-hmm. I believe I got to take it through a little bit more to register in, and they mm-hmm. didn't know who they were messing with. But I know how to advocate. A I different know how to last talk. name than the rest of you all, you mm-hmm. say. Yeah. So I had to go through some extra things, and that was just getting mm-hmm. in there, and I already knew. I just smiled and said, <laughs> they don't know, see out of here. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's okay. They all know me now mm-hmm. from the top down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think our parents need to be involved. Our parents need to stop. This is my issue. In my experience, you got to stop coming up there trying to intimidate this, these in, staff intimidating members. Intimidating. You can't come up there trying to yes, black that. them and street them. Because you know what they do? Because they don't. They, they send you right back to the school. Yep. Mm. And, 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 <laughs> they, and one thing that I notice is and that they, don't give any calls. They, they look to, they. it's almost like they want us to act that way. They're they not do. intimidated. They want us to act that way. They so really on do. paper, they can now go on an excuse. Right. Say you're belligerent. That's what they do. And please yep. know that they will. Now we know, know why the kid act like he yeah. acts yeah. Because, because the parent the parents. acts. Yeah. But what yeah. I want to say is this, too, because I know that a lot is going on, and they're probably trying to be careful on what to and what not to do. They can ban you. Mm-hmm. From school because of irate mm-hmm. behavior. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think it's more, and you, we don't want to get there. I know I want you to continue the people that you're contacting, but we don't want to give them mm-hmm. that. For the parents that's listening that have gone up and went off on people and saying people are gonna lose their jobs and y'all want to fight, they will ban you. So don't be that. Let's let's mm-hmm. be strong will advocating no policy parent. Be the parent that just just send you that just doesn't come to the school when they're in a concert or when um, the cell phone is missing. Mm-hmm. Be that parent when we want you. <laughs> all to come up and um, help create things for the school. Be that parent. Be that parent that comes up and um, on sits on the trips. interviewing committees. Mm-hmm. We invite parents to come sit on the interviewing mm-hmm. committees. Interview the people that's Work coming the for your children. At the Work games. the concession mm-hmm. stand. Go on a field Absolutely. trip. You may not be able to go but on one. But don't be the parent where, uh-oh, here they come. Because in my mind some days I'm like, oh, here they mm-hmm. come. Mm-hmm. Let me Let me pray. I got to pray out hard before I go up there because I already mm-hmm. know what's getting ready to happen. Which mm-hmm. is a part of the catch-22 because <laughs> when us folk move to these areas, we do have to work a little longer. We do have to work a few more I hours. Do. It's I a little do. harder to, <laughs> to, to, to volunteer our time, but it's something we have. It's very important because right. we don't understand the impact and the effect. Mm-hmm. We're expecting something. our children to be able to go to school and just handle these situations. The situations. But unfortunately... Miles is a great example that, first of all, Miles, you're what, 13? 12. 12. Miles is 12. You can't, Miles can't handle this situation between him and his, his, uh, his, his teacher. Right. The, the parents have to. to. Yeah. And when bullies and stuff get involved and, you know, or people picking on, you know, we say bullies now. That's not even a word we use. I think we were talking about that yesterday. Me, Alvin, and Rob. Was that us? We said we didn't even really use, did we use the term bullies? We didn't use the term bullies uh, when we were growing uh, up. Well, this was happening, but, you know, we... It, we didn't say bullying. Yeah. I mean, man, you just fight. You just fight back, and you know. But back in the on, day, you didn't have all of this. You didn't have all of this here because, like Toon said, you fought. And you stop. Then you guys go back to yeah, the park and on. start Did playing football, on. basketball, or whatever you did. The girls went on to sit down mm-hmm. and talked about whatever hey, they had to talk about. Or you just left you know, them alone for you life. Left them alone. Or right. left them alone for well, life. And you gained respect in certain. And I think that's what I was trying to do in the beginning with the. As far as the mouse and his peers, not this adult, 
I was just going to leave the boys alone. Boys be. will be boys. Mm -hmm. They fall in with one little boy. <laughs> fall in and fall off. Fall in and fall off. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say this. I was think, uh, Sean was saying something. Now, this is what, one reason I really got involved. Back at part of the beginning of the school, something went down. And Miles, uh, little boy, walked past him getting on the bus and brushed him real hard. So... <laughs> Miles, and he got on on the bus with a little happy self. Then Miles got on the bus, and he said something to Miles. Miles got up, and he did smack him. So they put <laughs> Miles off the bus. Oh, so man. Miles had a choice. The parents either pick him up or he could walk home. Well, we're at work. We can't tell me, get him. Miles, just start walking home. You're at oh, the man. age you need to start learning your way anyway. Start walking home. So... <laughs> Miles got to walking home, and Miles gets on his phone on Instagram and called the little boy's name out. So and so, so and so, so and so. This is what I'm gonna do to you. Blah blah blah. Miles blah, blah. said that. Situations. Well, that was a different situation. But you still did. But it. the little boy, but look, you know who I'm talking about, well, was see, involved in it. He did that. Piece. But before Miles can get that, push that button on Instagram, the principal had the message. And had called by the time we did get home, got Miles, went wow. back to the school. Wait the a principal minute. Wait, had wait you got to start. You can't just yeah, skip over that. Happen? Wait a minute. Say that again. The principal had gotten the Instagram that Miles sent out, put it out there. So what happened is the kids, this is life. The kids are screenshot, and even though they're um, putting up stats also, and they gave it to the principal. I get it every day. Okay. Like, I think I got it. Uh -huh. Somebody just texts me something before I got it. Okay. Put them on. Yeah. I thought they, they, they was doing they, nah, they I was, thought it was talking about something else. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, so I was like, wait a minute now. And you know what? So I'm they don't throw wanna, my phone. They don't want to talk about <laughs> bullying, but that's actually cyberbullying. Yeah. And so they're going to, I see the school using what they want to use. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Oh, they're not going to use the fact that he's been bullied all year, but they're saying, uh oh, mild cyberbullying, and that's another type of bullying that he put that stat about somebody even if you don't say the name mm -hmm. it's a target that it's a they're using it as a target well this the same day he had got so put off the bus because this other boy brushed against him with a mm -hmm. little happy self and got on the bus mm -hmm. so now he's so in trouble for the that other little boy message. oh he got they said uh well somebody on the inside mm -hmm. said they just talked to the other little boy he got sent home for a day Cause he put that message out there. Well, that was then his the fault. principal <laughs> said, "Well, I would be mad. Yeah, I, I would be mad either. Bring your books with you but and your homework, time, baby. Come he on. still." But the, the principal said, "Well, you know, right. Miles, I could have gave you three days. Well, give him what you want. Cause old Happy didn't have no business touching him at all." Hmm. Don't put messages out either, okay? Yeah, Miles. Well, he because... hasn't done that. As a matter of fact, he don't even have a phone. But so, just, that's going to be bigger when you get to middle and high school. That's a yeah, huge this social media thing. That is, social yeah. media is a <laughs> use it for fun. Don't position. use it to um, <laughs> don't careful. use it to express yourself. Yeah, this neck went down. No, you know I can't stand. Don't put any messages on there because uh, even though they're going they're going to respond back to you, and they'll probably take their stat down. Their screen everybody's taking screenshots, screenshots. Mm -hmm. and that's also a part of bullying. I know we're upset on how we react, but just allow your grandmother and your mom to advocate for you. You got so much school to focus on. Let's just do that. Right. Yeah. Tell them what so you much school. Be. Tell them yeah. what you want. What you want to be? Um, I want to be a psychologist, and like when I rec I want to first I want to try to go to the NBA, okay. and then like if I don't go to the NBA, back up. Um, be a psychologist. I love the backup plan. I like both of both plans. You know, you because you understand the mind. You're gonna understand the mind. But in order to go, we we have to make sure we're not. Um, if this is the situation we stay in, we're gonna have to learn some um, self control and just learn some coping mechanisms that are owed to you, so that you can keep going each grade and keep learning, so you can go to college and do all these great things. Because this is just a little bit of it. More adversity is coming, and you have a great support system. And I truly appreciate grandmother and your mom. I that that's what you really want in schools. Is if we all just kind of work it and figure it out together. That's really the village. The village isn't the punitive. The village is how do we make our young men and our young women great and better. We all are different. Oh, just look my bad. Different. Bad cue. I, I was waiting <laughs> on the breath. I thought I, I thought you had it, and you went back. <laughs> Well, this is Wake Up St. Louis, y'all. It's 8.51. This is a totally different show for today. We've had so many messages on the Facebook side from other educators and uh, Minister Craig Edwards, Pastor Victor Hicks. We see a lot of people. Uh, Lori Union had a lot to say because mm -hmm. she talked about 
uh, being the parent of one who has a 504 and a, what is it, an IEP? IEP. IEP. She says her daughter has both. Her daughter is autistic, so she's weighed in a lot. Uh, we've had a lot of a lot of messages here. Um, yeah, Minister Craig Edwards says social media takes this thing to a whole nother level. Another level. Um, so Miles, you have to be sure. You know, you 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 can't. That's that's one thing that that is. I said that before. That's one thing I say to my kids all the time. I'm not I'm not big on you playing the victim when you're wrong right. in some situation. That's so right. you can't just know that Miles, you're gonna be held accountable in life. You can't you can't get out there and do wrong and then jump and play. This is what they did to me. I'm the victim and all this. But you got on social media and you know you made some threats and they do take that serious mm -hmm. because you gave them something that they can see. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know when exactly. when stuff is happening exactly. on the playground, when yeah. stuff is happening outside out out of sight, that's different. Mm -hmm. But you gave them something that they can mm -hmm. see, and so now you look like the aggressor. Mm -hmm. You exactly. know, even though you're responding or whatever. You you look like the aggressor, so you have to. We we're gonna have to figure out a way beyond today, beyond today's show. Yeah, each year you're gonna have to change the narrative because now that's where it is at that school. Right. So each year he's gonna have to get better and better. So when it's time when he goes to middle school, high school, that is not an issue because mm. right now every year that's gonna be an issue because mm -hmm. the teacher next year gonna be looking like oh that mm -hmm. that, that miles kid is mm -hmm. but he can change the narrative mm -hmm. right. going in with a different mindset focus a different focus a different attitude mm -hmm. because if he goes in the same way that same teacher who might mm -hmm. have the same back because these teachers talk mm -hmm. you know so he's gonna have to change his whole way he's going about things handling yeah. stuff handling his things. response yep mm -hmm. yep his but, response you know what and i don't i don't take up for neither one of them he and his sister i don't have but two mm -hmm. and i tell people i kill a brick over both of them but uh i don't take up for, because when they write they write when they wrong they wrong, mm -hmm. they wrong. Mm -hmm. right they did to the wrong <laughs> and um I've been torn so between this whole mm -hmm, situation from the beginning to mm -hmm. the end. And I had even got to the point for real myself. I'm like, well, just Miles must be just doing everything they said. Mm -hmm. But then I had to think about Miles' p background. Miles came from me. Yeah, that means Miles he was doing, me. yeah. You know, <laughs> I agree that he was doing everything they say. I love you, too. Because I know you, too, I know you my that. whole life. Don't you say nothing. <laughs> yeah, but, Miles is guilty. But, um, there it is. This but uh, like Two said, when Two got the message, he thought Ethan was the one in the fight. Then he said, no, not Miles. Miles ain't in the fight. Because Miles is not going to fight. He'll mm -hmm. walk away and cry. He may throw a ball at you or something like that. Uh, he'll get in the backyard and just bounce the ball from 6 in the morning to 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Miles, are you coming to eat? No. Nah. And just stay, all right, stay on out there. But like I said, I got to the point I just almost believed that maybe Miles had done everything. And, but then I had to think about it. I said, no, Miles cannot be that bad. Now we're at the school. We're talking to the other teachers. That's how we figured this thing out. We talked to the, all his other teachers in his classes, passing in the classes. Nobody has nothing bad to say about Miles. So what this one teacher said, no, we had a group meeting with all the teachers, all the Miles teachers, and all of them got complaints. So they don't know me. I got a little FBI in me. <laughs> we double back to the teachers and asked them, did you all have a meeting on this day and talk with so-and-so? And said this, nobody said, no, we ain't had no meeting. So we found out that this teacher and this principal was lying. So <laughs> I did ask the question, is this principal and this teacher some kin? Are they friends? Are they what? What they doing? They eat spaghetti together, what? <laughs> some ain't right. <laughs> so... But no, when Miles is right, Miles is right. But mm -hmm. if Miles is up there at that school, cutting mm -hmm. up sideways, gotcha. I want to know too. I know I can't year? go to the school with Black Beauty or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. But I can go to my house with what I want. And if they don't like it, take him with you if he's cutting up that bad. But even at home, I really don't have no problems with Miles. The only thing I have in, with Miles, you know, 
Well, don't tell it. There we go. Right there. I just saved you from nah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, saved you from no yourself. Problem. I saw you looking at me. I don't have no problem with Miles. Because when Miles go to, when that, that anger thing look like, or, you know, he looked like, you could tell he's something going on. We quick to tell them, hey. So what do we do as a village? What do we do? I think everybody has a responsibility. Today I really see this more than, than ever. I think we all have a responsibility. I don't think we all have a responsibility to every kid. But I think we all have a responsibility to the kid that's in our village, right. to the kid that lives around us. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So mm-hmm. then now my mind goes to other things. When you see somebody go back to a school and shoot it up, you know, yeah. when you see things like that, yeah. now you understand because, you know, the media, the, the, the media tries to erase the fact that these were the kids getting jumped on and beat up. Mm-hmm. These were the right. kids that's getting right. picked on and that's all right. that. And Miles, I know you hear what I'm saying. Hit, hit me clearly. I'm not saying you go back, mm. you know, and you, you go take vengeance and you're shooting up schools and stabbing. And, but where you're headed now in your response is really progressing. It's getting worse. You went from a push to words to slapping somebody on the bus to, to hauling off and punching somebody multiple times. It's your 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 response is getting worse. So we have to stop. We got to stop this now before you're the kid on the news or the the 18 year old or the 19 year old on the news in a few years. So as a village, I'm really seeing now as a part of the village that, uh, we have a responsibility. Yep. We really do have a responsibility. I, I, I thought the show was going one place and now I see I f- and feel a whole different, you know, I, I, I see something different. So anyway, like I said, Hey, it is eight fifty eight. Y'all <laughs> we, we've been at the end of this show. Uh, miles, I want you to, to, uh, just know, man, it's it's not gonna stop here. I I feel I you know I I definitely I I feel a responsibility and and all of that. The one thing I really am happy about today's show is that Alvin was able to be quiet. Be quiet. Mm. 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 Not mm. say a word. Mm. But let me tell y'all this: awesome. I say that with a little bit of humor, just a little bit. But I was actually scared mm. about Alvin. For real, Alvin is my brother, and I know Alvin, <laughs> and I know how Alvin worked. In the school, I'm not gonna say stuff that he used to do to them kids. Boy. Man, don't say it. He might go to jail. Right. <laughs> and I know Alvin has a strong take. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm really happy Alvin was quiet. I think Alvin had something to say. I think Alvin had something to say, but I think I, can see I think we should respond. Say, I think we should allow Alvin to respond That's in two weeks. Ooh, As his brother, I'm going to tell you, in two weeks, I think we need to let him respond when he's not in the middle of this situation. Let him step back and clear his mind. As his brother, I want to help protect Alvin from what, because Alvin can say something that's going to come across wrong to everybody else. But I think me, Don, and Rob at least know his heart, and we know th- that it, it he doesn't mean it exactly the way everybody's going to take it. Right. So I'm really, I, I'm really, I'm saying it with some humor, but I'm real serious. I'm, I'm, I'm 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 happy that he was kind of quiet today, just for the sake of how everybody's going to view him, and and they don't know his heart, they they don't know really where his stance is and what his love is for other people and his heart is for other people. But he's strong. He got some strong feelings and some strong thoughts on this. So two weeks, Alvin. <laughs> I'll be on his team. Second week in May, you get to <laughs> Mother's Day. Oh, Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Make, a, make, a, make a man. Third week in May. We change it. Third week in May. In the three weeks. Okay. It'll probably be important for so Alvin to, under, no uh, to let everybody day. know. To first, understand how he was raised. and You know, so right. yeah, last, last time it's your background. You know, determines what. Yeah. yeah. Right. So third week in May, we're gonna allow yeah, Alvin to. Alvin is gonna be our special guest. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's gonna be our co-host May. and special guest. Third yeah. week in May, we change yeah. it. Yeah. We're gonna allow him to tell his Good background, girl. and then we're gonna let him weigh mm-hmm. in on this Good. because, uh, yeah. So, man, this is this is a different show for today. You didn't get all of the same laughs, but I think it had to be addressed. I think it was something we needed to discuss, especially based off of what people are saying on Facebook. Everybody, there are people on here saying and commenting who I would never think would comment. Jesse Prather is saying he really needed this conversation today. Pastor Victor Hicks, there are a lot of people on here saying this, uh, uh, saying stuff. Evangelist LaJoyce Barber, she said a lot on today's show. So uh, uh, Pastor Tina Grimes has weighed in. So a lot of people are weighing in, and and I believe um, – I if anybody it um, has any questions, though, about their legal rights and you just don't you don't want to put it out there, you can inbox me and I'll answer. I'll give you phone numbers because I don't want Tiandra us to be Bland. in the dark. Is it William and Tiandra Bland mm-hmm. on Facebook? Yes. 
That's William and Tiandra. It's not William and what is it? What is it saying? William Dash. William, William, yeah. William Dash, Tiandra Bland uh, on Facebook. Inbox her. Yeah, please. Any anybody who I'll didn't want to put anything. your information and your business out, mm-hmm. reach out to her. Um, yeah, I'm not going to speak for Sean, but if, if you have any questions towards Sean, you can inbox me and I'll forward it to Sean. Unless Sean, Mr. Tate gets on here and says otherwise and says that you can send it directly to him. But other than that, send it to me and I'll send it to him. But, man, any last words? Uh, Rob, you didn't have much to say. That's because Rob was the bully. So I just want y'all to know that. Rob is the bully. That's why he ain't said nothing. Alvin? Yes, Rob is the bully. Okay, thank you. I didn't see C. Dion Wooden joining us today. He, I haven't he was seen him. Was he on his own? Yeah, he's on there. I didn't see him, but I'm sure he can concur. <laughs> Rob is the bully. So hopefully Rob's heart has been changed on today. <laughs> hopefully he'll go back. Cause, because I'm going to be honest, as an uncle and as, a, as another man, a part of the village, in, in my nephew, I call him Rion, in Ryan's life, Ryan got some bully in him. Oh, yeah. He get it from his daddy. Don't he? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He got oh, some bully. Yeah. What are you guys so, talking about? Man, that's, that's what right. bullies say. <laughs> <laughs> when you confirm it. <laughs> First word we're talking about. <laughs> All right. So today's show, really different. But uh, we just thank y'all for joining us. Hey, Lady E, we see you. Uh, we didn't get to really shout out and just talk to everybody on the day. But, uh, oh, Sean says me too. So that's Sean Tate, C-H-A-U-N. Hey, Sean. Tate. He says inbox him as well if you have any questions. Sean is very, you know, Sean is into politics and everything. Sean knows. You see Sean start calling out codes and numbers, and Mm -hmm. Sean is really. Oh, I thought when he said me too, I thought he was saying I was a bully too. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. So, yeah, y'all reach out to Miss Bland, William William Dash, Tiandra Bland, and Sean, C-H-A-U-N, Sean Tate, T-A-T-E, on Facebook. And, uh, oh, wow. That's right. Uh-oh. That's right. Stand up, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> all them Woody's are bullies. Joy, <laughs> Woody is a bully, too. Right, she got out here. And look at all them exclamation right. points. Oh, don't be talking about my Ryan. Girl, you know your Ryan is a bully. <laughs> he is not. You know, uh, okay, I didn't say he's, okay, I did just say then. But earlier. Earlier, I worded it the way I wanted it, mm. and and I meant that's, it. And that is, Ryan got some bully in him. Oh, that's that's definitely the truth. I think all of us got a little <laughs> bully, but it height. depends on how you use it. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. But I want to say uh, before we go, yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want first thank you too for uh, for this time, and uh, just bless to, you, my child. Oh, but my uh, you know, I've been God. asking the question for the last year or so. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to find a mentoring group for Miles mm-hmm. because in our house, he's the only male in my house. And um, everybody that he looked to, they either passed away or moved away. So he really doesn't have anybody. And I've been trying to find a mentoring group. Let me quote. Let me go back. I've been trying to strong, trying to find a strong, somebody that's worded and grounded in, in the word because I can go to the Catholics. I can go to the uh you know, in, I got you. Okay? But I've seen some of them in works. Mm. So I've been trying to find a strong mentoring group for for Miles, somebody that can mentor to his mind, you know, like the big brother type thing. So mm-hmm. if you all can Done find deal. somebody to reach Done out. Done deal. I mean, too, we I know you. you've always Done been deal. there for them. Done deal. But, you know. Done I deal. So basically what she said that. is, too, you're not good enough. Yes, I am. Saying, you're looking for somebody a little bit more darker. She's too light like that. Look at Miles, though. Miles is your hand. A little, 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 little bit grounded in their background and they black. I'm saying, come on. You like him, bro. See, Alvin is woke now. He done started something. You see, you look like the principal. If he just wanted to get somebody, you know they look like Big Evers. I knew he wasn't going to say that. Just be quiet. Westless <laughs> night. Oh, <my> <laughs> Any of those would do if you know somebody. <laughs> but I'm, I mean, I know too. I know too. Uh-uh, that's all that. right. I got. I, I got. We got you. Too. We got you. Me too, like that. We got you. you know we got what? you. Alvin just have to. Say. Hey, we didn't do any of our, any of our announcements for today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this last commercial, and we're gonna uh, and I go to our closing. We don't have any music in there. We're just going to get out of here. But I do all want you all to know to please tune in 
I'm going to reiterate this commercial before it plays. So is that a reiteration or a pre iteration That's a pre iteration yeah. So uh, uh, a pastor friend of mine has <laughs> a, uh, a former manager of Planned Parenthood on tonight on his radio show mm. there in Houston, Texas. And you'll hear some sound bites from it. And it's pretty it's pretty, it's pretty intense, Pastor, Pastor Rondy Long. So um, you all, please, if you can, join in live tonight, and uh, you'll hear his interview with her and what she has to say. Any last words from Alvin just said some foolishness, so that was his last <laughs> word. <laughs> what you got, Rob? It was a good show, man. Thanks show. you all for tuning in. Tune in next week when we'll be back. When we back to our foolishness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be serious too long. <laughs> Don. Yeah, good show, man. And uh, Miles, just you know, hang in there. We have good scripture. Good scripture for you next week. All right, good script. We'll have announcements. <laughs> we'll have uh, inspirational thoughts Back of the week. The we'll have our music <laughs> and our commercials. <laughs> yeah, we'll be able to talk about folk, and we'll be able to shout out and all of that. And Mute Alvin, Erna Alvin. Yeah, we'll right, be able to do all, all of that. that. Yeah, <laughs> weren't able to do it today, but well, it, we'll, I think it was we'll well talk needed. about that surprise appreciation. That's see, definitely. that'll be yeah. next, we next week. We'll be back to it again. We'll be back. We're we'll two years into that. Back to the shenanigans. Right. So I want to. I want to thank uh, uh, the future Dr. Bland, Tiandra Bland, yeah. representing Riverview High School, assistant yeah. principal. What? Uh, what grade again? Nine to twelve. I have everybody. You have everybody. Different parts of the. You alphabet. got promoted. Huh. And who's the principal? I thought Darius? you used to only have like sophomores the or juniors Darius at one Curry. time. That is a principal. Langston graduate. I want you he to know. He is. That. Yes, he's a proud really? Langston graduate. Go Langston Lions. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why do oh, I yeah. know that? <laughs> wow. Well, I graduated from the University the of Arkansas. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. The heard back of hills of Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to thank my brother, Sean Tate, for joining us on the day for his, his insight and his input. Definitely need it. I want yes, to sir. thank uh, my auntie, Sister Cynthia Hilliard, Sister C Baby, Miss, Miss Granny Gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Look at going through a purse. If y'all check that purse, you'll be amazed right. what's in there. I don't think you would be amazed after hearing it for the last hour. <laughs> Thank my nephew, Miles Frierson. Uh, much respect and love to his mother, uh, Muffy, Carlos Hilliard, who's now in Dallas on this morning. That's why she couldn't be here this morning. Um, but, yeah, much love, much respect. And uh, thank everybody for listening. Something I was going to say, but I think that's it. Yeah, next week we'll talk about other stuff. Man, we had a great day yesterday. We really did. We're not really talking about it, you know. Yeah. It's, it's been on the hush hush, but St. Louis, we we some something really huge happened on yeah, yesterday. Be on the lookout. Be on yeah. the lookout. It took place in the city, and when I say huge, I mean like it's history huge. in the making. Huge, huge. So be on the lookout, and uh, we'll be announcing all of that pretty soon. So we love y'all. We thank y'all. It's so crazy that I'm leaving y'all with this Planned Parenthood commercial. <laughs> It's not a Planned Parenthood commercial, but the <laughs> <laughs> the commercial about the show about the f- former Planned Parenthood manager. So anyway, love y'all. I'm Levi Two King. It's Don Wright. Rob, Doc, oh, go ahead. Doctor Alvin Quinn. <laughs> Rob Woody. <laughs> With our special uh, guest, like the future Doctor Bland, yes. <laughs> Sister C Baby, and Miles Frierson. Like right second. here on Wake Up St. Louis. Me Thank Too you. Music Sunday Morning Show. We love y'all. Nine eight nine ten a.m. Y'all be careful on today. Uh, the high will be sixty seven degrees. It'll be beautiful. Zero percent chance of rain. It'll be sunny, so enjoy this day. Yeah. Peace out. Love y'all. Peace out. Deuces. Wake Wake up, St. Louis. Meet you this morning show. Yeah. I was always pro life. I sold my morals out for money. Kingdom Church Radio Family. Get ready for the most important interview you may hear all year. They put it in a red biohazard bag, and they would put all the babies in the one bag. And they would wrap it up and throw it in a freezer. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Former manager of Planned Parenthood tells all. This is a Kingdom Radio exclusive. Listen to hear the dark Planned Parenthood secret that she reveals that makes her say this. I might get killed. (laughs) No, you will not. We we, we bond that in the name of Jesus. calendars, Sunday, April 29th, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We will release the truth about Planned Parenthood right here at KingdomChurchRadio.com.